Meaning literally right traffic day, Dager Hager Traffic, or Dagen H, H Day, was the day in 1967 that the country of Sweden managed to successfully switch from driving on the left hand side of the road to driving on the right. Not a spur of the moment decision, this day had been planned for years prior to its implementation, in recognition of the inherent problems that arose by the fact that among the nations of continental Europe, Sweden was the only country where people still drove on the left. If you're curious why, you can see our video on why some countries drive on the right and some drive on the left for more on that one. In addition, the architects of the plan tapped into the widespread perception that having the steering wheel on the left while also driving there caused more head-on collisions. Regardless, switching to the right was not a popular idea among Swedes, and when the idea was first floated in 1955, only 17% of the population approved the change. However, realizing that in the late 1960s nearly 10 million cars would cross Swedish borders one way or another, and knowing that the number was predicted to double by the early 1970s, Swedish leaders they decided to make the switch. Voting for the Statens Hogger Traffic Commission HTK, in 1963, the Swedish Riksdag instituted a commission that established a four-year program to make the change. This commission was also tasked with educating the populace about said change. Consulting psychologists on how to get the public to buy into the plan, the government sponsored campaigns that placed the Dager H logo on everything from underwear, including advertising with scantily clad models wearing said underwear, to milk cartons. They even sponsored a song contest where the Telstars won with Hall Dig Till Hager Svensson, which translates to Keep to the Right Svensson. The switch necessitated the replacement or retrofitting of nearly every traffic light, bus, the doors were to be switched to the right-hand side, bus stop, which had to be moved across the street, road line, and headlamp. At the time, a trend had begun to arise to have headlamps direct their lights to be slightly brighter on the one side in order to illuminate the bordering ditch or sidewalk side of the road better. The rising popularity of this increased the pressure to make the switch sooner than later, as those who had the headlamps made for left-hand driving but driving on the right-hand roads would reportedly blind oncoming drivers. The final cost of the Daga H has been estimated to be around £40 million in 1967 money, or about £648 million today. During the preparations for the single-day switch, the new traffic lights were wrapped in black plastic to keep them from confusing drivers before the big day. Further, road lines, which were painted white instead of the traditional Swedish yellow, were covered in black tape. In addition, prior to H Day, 12 million notes were distributed to citizens and 130,000 tilted H signs were deployed along Sweden's roads to remind drivers of the switch. On Sunday, September 3, 1967, for most of the country, all non-essential traffic was banned from 1 to 6 a.m. In these places, at 4.50 a.m., all vehicles that were allowed to drive had to completely stop and then carefully change to the right side of the road. At precisely 5 a.m., traffic was allowed to resume, at which time Swedish drivers experienced what Time magazine called a brief but monumental traffic jam that happily resolved itself quickly. In some of its largest towns, including Stockholm and Malmö, the ban on non-essential traffic began as early as 10 p.m. the night before and lasted until 4 p.m. that Sunday. This was in order to give workers the time to redo intersections. In total, about 8,000 officials and 150,000 volunteers were deployed that weekend either to convert traffic signals and lines, keep the peace, or to assist pedestrians at dangerous intersections. Eager to try out the latest new thing, hundreds of thousands of drivers poured onto Swedish streets that Sunday once their ban had been lifted. Surprisingly, there were only 157 accidents, with only 32 causing any personal injuries. The following Monday's rush hour traffic went relatively smoothly, all things considered, and the 125 reported traffic accidents were fewer than the typical daily number of 130 to 198. Many believe that the combination of the perceived risk with the lack of familiarity made motorists more careful than they'd normally be. For similar reasons, pedestrians are actually about 28% less likely to be hurt while crossing a street if they jaywalk rather than if they cross at a crosswalk that doesn't include any additional signals like traffic lights. Bonus fact. The British, who also drove on the left, observed the switch intently, although they remained unconvinced that a similar change would be in their best interests. According to some estimates, moving to the right side in Britain at the time would have cost nearly seven times what it cost in Sweden, and whether accurately or not, experts anticipated even more switch-induced accidents. In addition, they noted that many countries, including Ireland, Malta, and Cyprus, had their own traffic eccentricities that worked just fine even for tourists. For instance, the people of Timor drive on the right in the east. 
And now for another bonus fact. Many early cars had the driver's seat in the center of the car rather than on one side or the other. Gradually, car manufacturers started putting the seat to one side. Some chose to put it on the side closest to the curb so people could more easily avoid scraping buildings, curbs, etc. Other car manufacturers would put it on the opposing traffic side to help reduce car to car collisions, which would tend to be more deadly. And now for another bonus fact. Many early American motorized vehicles actually placed the steering wheel on the right hand side of the car, even though America used the keep right rule. This practice finally was put to an end, largely due to Henry Ford. He preferred the left side steering wheel, so Ford cars featured this. Due to their popularity, this effectively squashed the right hand steering wheel in America. And now for another bonus fact. According to research done in 1969 by J. J. Leeming, keep left countries have a much lower collision rate than keep right countries. It is thought the reason behind this is that most people's right eye is their dominant eye. Thus, the right eye in keep left traffic is the one closest to oncoming traffic and so should reduce collisions. Another theory as to why this might be is that most people are right handed. So, when driving a manual transmission car in a keep left country, most people's dominant hand is on the steering wheel. This can help a person maneuver more accurately. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up below and don't forget to subscribe. Brand new videos just like this every day of the week. If you're looking for another channel where I do daily videos, do check out Top 10s. You'll find a link to that below. And as always, thank you for watching.